Hello, this is Graham Roberts. This is the first time I've used this video system, screencast, so it may not go terribly well. Let's hope for the best. What we've been looking at today is JavaScript and local storage. So I hope it's useful to you. We're looking at the page which you can get to from the link up here and I'd like you to do that please to actually follow along. I'm using the Chrome browser. If you're using a browser like Firefox or almost any browser actually, you should find a way to get into the web development tools and see local storage. Even Microsoft Edge has this facility. So let's get on. Local storage is a persistent storage system that is stored on the client. It's not stored on the server. That means it's vulnerable to anyone who uses the client and it also means that it can be accidentally deleted or deliberately deleted by someone when you didn't want to delete. Similarly, it can be quite difficult to use sometimes unless you have a cunning idea as to what local um, key you're going to use because the keys have to be unique. The local storage system is a key value system, like a map. And if you press F12, as I'm going to do, then you should see on your screen that it uh, changes and shows you the development tools. Now you can see that I am in application and not one of the other options. There are many interesting options here, but we want application and we want local storage. You can see there are many, many local storage options, and that's because these options are um, dedicated to or dependent on particular websites. So, um, before we go into that detail, let's look at the session storage. Session storage, as it suggests, is really temporary. It ends with the session. And so they're a bit like cookies in that way, session cookies. Let's look at the one for this website, which is W3Schools. Now you can see that there are many different um, key value systems already there. And that is because um, they're stored whenever I use um, W3Schools you will have a different set because you'll be looking at your client machine as I'm looking at my client machine and my browser is literally different to yours in this connection. Now let's go back to the actual program that you've hopefully had some time to study. You'll see that um, there are buttons in the HTML and those buttons have certain events that clicking them triggers, such as create item. That's a function in JavaScript and as we're going to see, it will actually create an item for local storage. Delete item will, yep delete the item in local storage. And what else is there? There is a display item. If we don't press F12, and why would we as a user, um, the fact is we won't see what's in local storage unless we display it. We can see also that there is a paragraph that has got an ID of demo. That is so we can use the inner HTML property 
to display uh, messages, particularly uh, the message of what is in the item, the value of the item. So let's um, have a look now at the HTML, which is on the right hand side here. So the storage remove item method is what we're looking at. This example demonstrates how to use the remove item method to delete a specified local storage item. Since you might not have the specified item stored in your local storage, we have added a script that creates it for you. Now what this is going to do is actually create a local storage item for W3 schools that has got a key that is, well let's see it, if I click here, and we look down here, we should be able to see it. Well, what I'll do is I'll delete these uh, values so you can see what's going on. Well, this is the key, my time, and the value is a string of numbers that represents the date now. So I said that there had to be a unique key, and the unique key here is in fact the name, my time. Only this key will have a value attached to it. So if I click create local storage item again, you can see the date now has overwritten the key value system. because my time is the name of this key, a unique name, and the value is the time. So I'll just do that again. Okay, so you can see that is happening each time I click that button. What is actually happening in the create local storage item? Here it is. Local storage dot my time is equal to date now. So when I click that, the date now is overwriting in the value for my time key. Let's move down on the right hand side and remove the key. I can remove the key, like I'll remove this key, by doing right click on my mouse and I can edit the key or I can delete the key. So if I edit the key, for example, if I come in here and edit the key, I can call it something else. But that won't really help since we are associating our values to my time. If I wanted to have a different unique key, I could call it my time uh, something or other and then let go. And what will happen is that this key value system will stay in there until it's deleted. So, if I now create the local storage item again, the local storage is uh, my time is going to be somewhere in this list. Now it's down at the bottom here. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm going to delete it, and you see it's gone. So there's two ways to delete the key. Um, but we're using a button, and in this case the button is launching or triggering the event handler delete item in JavaScript, and that is local storage dot remove item and the name of the item, or the key of the item. Remember it's an associative key value system of storage. A bit like a dictionary with a word that uh, is associated to a description of that word in a dictionary. Right, um, the next thing we can look down to is display item. If we click on display item, nothing appears to happen. That's because uh, we haven't got uh, a complete view of what is going on here. 
but the item is displayed on the browser. Let's have a look at the um, actual JavaScript here. Var x equals local storage dot get item my time. So the value of the my time key is fetched from local storage and placed in this variable called x. We didn't need to do that. We could have just said um, document dot get element by id demo. Remember this area here in HTML is equal to instead of x we could have said local storage dot get item my time using the dot notation uh, method chain. Right, so what are we learning here? We're learning that local storage can be created, deleted, displayed, and also edited if you're able to get inside development tools. Why is this significant? Well, if you have a database approach with CRUD. Now, CRUD is create, read, update, and delete commands that you use in, say, SQL, structured query language. And so, the create would be a select verb, and sorry, the create would be the create verb, and the read would be the select verb. And the update would be, well, the update verb, and the delete would be the delete verb. So we can see there are similar functions for local storage. If you create a database, that's the create verb. If you create a record, what you're actually doing is inserting a record. So that would be the insert verb. Here, if you want to create a key, we just call it create with a key, create the item. If we want to delete it, delete the item. And if we want to display it, it's display the item. And if we want to edit, well, we can't do that unless we go into the development system. So local storage is in some ways analogous to or like the database approach using a server-side SQL database, perhaps with a front-end that's serviced by PHP, but it is very limited and it doesn't do editing well. It's not very easy to edit the key. Basically, you just delete the key and, and then uh, recreate it to edit the key, or I should say an item. Okay, let's uh, press F12 again, and we should find the development area disappears. It's not doing that readily on my system, and I think that's because I've got this recording going on. I'll just try again. There we go. Now, let's run it one more time. We're going to create the local storage item, delete it, display it, Nothing there because we deleted it, create it, display it, and there it is. Well, that's a little look at that particular script because in that script we find an awful lot about local storage, its association with the equivalent server side database approach of PHP MySQL, and that could be very useful. If you're, you're using, if you're using a local storage in a prototype web application, and then when you want to develop, or rather implement your application, you would change it to something more professional like a server-side database system. I hope this has been useful. This is Graham Roberts saying, Adios, and I hope it was useful to you. Uh, it's the first time I've ever used this particular screencast system. I uh, hope it went okay.